Answer the door, will you? John is upstairs. Jack the River instead of founding the Red Cross. 
little boy. Thank God. Thank God you brought her back, Ernest. How'd you do it? Never mind that, Daisy. Just take June upstairs. I had something to say to Mr. Whiteside. Well, what about Richard? Is there any news? It's all right, Daisy. All under control. Just take June upstairs. Father, have we enough melodrama? I do not need to be taken upstairs. I will go upstairs. Merry Christmas, Mr. Whiteside. It looks bad for John and Lewis. Come on, Mother. Walk me in my room. <laughs> <laughs> She is not, nor will she ever be married to that labor agitator you so kindly picked out for her. As for my son, he has been apprehended in Toledo and will be brought home within the hour. Not having your gift for invective, sir, I cannot tell you what I think of your obnoxious interference in our lives. However, I have now arranged that you will interfere no longer. Come in, officers. Hello. Oh, Sheriff's Department. These two are deputy sheriffs. They have a warrant by which I am enabled to put you out of this house. And I need hardly add, Mr. Whiteside, that it will be the greatest moment of my life. You have 15 minutes, Mr. Whiteside, and you are to pack up and get out. If you are not gone within those 15 minutes, these two may forcibly eject you. That will be all, boys. Will you wait outside? Side. And that means bag, baggage, wheelchair, penguins, octopus, and cockroaches. I'm now going upstairs to smash our radio so that not even accidentally will I ever hear your voice again. <laughs> <laughs> you know what my autograph, old fellow? Fifteen minutes, Mr. Whiteside. That's it, Chico. Well, Whiteside. I didn't get an idea. Any news from the front? Yes, the enemy's at my rear and nibbling. <laughs> Where'd you see Maggie was? In there? It's no use, Banjo. She's taking the one o'clock train out. No kidding. She's really leaving after all these years? She is! I mean, you've only got to one o'clock to do something. No, Banjo. I've got exactly 15, oh, 14 minutes to pull out of my hat the damnedest rabbit you've ever seen. 15 minutes? What are you talking about? In 15 minutes, baby's rosy little body is being tossed into the snow. My host is sworn out of warrants. I'm being kicked out. What? I've never heard of such a thing. What would he do a thing like that for? Never mind. The point is, I'm being kicked out in 15 minutes. Banjo, master's going a little desperate. Say, how about putting your cards on the table for rain? No, Banjo, you know dream girl as well as I do. What do you think? You're right. Banjo, will you go in there for a moment? I've got to think. Say, if I knew where Lorraine was, I could get a car and run her over. It wouldn't hurt her much. Please, <laughs> Banjo, I have to think. Smarter me, miss. Is this the YMCA? <laughs> <laughs> Is this your father? No, you idiot! Huh? Oh, Mr. Whiteside. I'm afraid I didn't get very far. Any suggestions? Sorry, Richard. I wish I was in a position where I could just give you some advice. But I'm afraid I'm just not in the right position to. Alright, then. Well, you're not in a position to give any sort of advice. Thank you, sir. Here's a little something for your trouble. Thank you, sir. Good day. Will you please go upstairs, Richard? <laughs> Ten minutes, Mr. Whiteside. I've already smoked this, Mr. Whiteside. Do you feel any better? Superb, John. Any cyanide in this orange juice? <laughs> Answer the door, John. Yes, sir. Probably some mustard gas from an old friend. Say, that crazy bill made a great move, Sarah. 
He wants to give her a screen test. John, a tray for Miss Sheldon. Better make it one minute eggs. <laughs> Darling, it's the most beautiful Christmas morning. The snow is absolutely glistening. Too bad you can't get out. Oh, I'll probably see a bit of it. But, Lorraine, dear, what time were you and Jefferson planning on leaving? Oh, Sherry, how did you know? Is Bert here? Oh, he dropped in a little while ago. Worked rather fast, didn't you, dear? Darling, I was just swept off my feet by the play. Yes. It's magnificent. It's the kind of part that only comes along once in ten years. I'm so grateful to you, Sherry. Really, sometimes I think you're the only friend I have in this world. Thank you, my dear. Now, what time are you planning on leaving? Oh, I don't know. I think it's 4 o'clock. You know, quite apart from anything else, Bert really is a very attractive man, Sherry. It makes it rather a pleasure spraying across a little Miss Vitriol. In fact, it's all worked out beautifully. Sherry and Lamb, I want to give you the most beautiful Christmas present you've ever had in your life. Now, just tell me, anything you want, anything at all, I'm so deliriously happy that I... <laughs> that sounds like Banjo. Is he here? He is, my dear. Just a family circle gathering at Christmas. <laughs> oh, my, how time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> Why, hello, sweetie pants. How are you? Very well, thank you. And you, Banjo? I'm fine, fine. Say, how's the mattress business, Lorraine? <laughs> <laughs> Very funny. It's too bad, Banjo, that your pictures aren't as funny as you seem to think you are. You've got me there, Mama. Say, you look a bit in the pink, Lorraine. Anything in the wind white side? Not a glimmer. What time does the boat set so? About seven minutes. What boat is this? The good ship up the creek. <laughs> Listed everything except the New Year's Eve broadcast. Wasn't there a schedule on that? Yeah, yes, I think it's on the table there somewhere. New Year's Eve? Oh, Bert and Al here in Lake Placid. You were up at my cottage there once, weren't you, Sherry? It's lovely, isn't it? Away from everything, <laughs> just snow and clear, cold nights. <laughs> That's probably Bert now. I told him to meet me here. You know, I'm looking forward to Lake Placid. Bert's the kind of man who will do all when he's born to beautiful. Will he get time? Wait, <laughs> <laughs> Yes, sir. Where's the friend? All right, come ahead. Care now. Careful. <laughs> <laughs> Careful there, Nell's finger in. Where would you like this foot? Right here. It's for you, Mr. Weissner. Why, Sherry, what's this? There's one thing I needed right now. It was an Egyptian mummy. <laughs> <laughs> Your expression. 
as you stood in that case. There was an absolute halo about you. Oh, Sherry, how sweet. It transcended any moral expression I've ever seen. <laughs> Please, step into it again, dear. Sherry, you're joshing me, aren't you? My dear, I don't make really light of these things. I was deeply moved. There was a strange beauty about you, Lorraine. Pure dimension. Please do it again. Well, I'm not sure exactly what it is that I did, but I'll... Oh, I feel too silly, Sherry! Lorraine, dear, in that single moment you approached the epitome of your art, and you shouldn't be ashamed of it. A little while ago you asked me what I wanted as a, for a Christmas present. All I want, dear, is the memory of you in that moment. Charlie, <laughs> don't jump up. Well, dust thou art, and dust to dust. Eureka! That's service for you. She should be all right in there. Yeah, she can breathe fine. We'll let her out, we'll let her out as soon as we get on the plane. Say, what are we going to do now? How are we going to get this out of here? Some more time, Banjo. That's the first step. Think fast, Captain. Think fast. This is everything, Sherry. I'm leaving three cargoes. Is there anything out there? What's in this basket? Oh, nothing. Just take it out. Oh, wait. The picture. I love the picture. The only thing I haven't done is to put all your broadcasts in order. Do you still want me to do that? Um, uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Please do that. That's very important. Thank you. I'll see you before I go, Benjo. I've got it. What? I knew I've seen this face before. Now I know we can get this out of here. What face? How? Your time is up, Mr. Whiteside. Fifteen minutes. Ah, oh, yes, Mr. Stanley. Fifteen minutes. But just one thing, favor before I go. Will you please summon those two officers of yours and ask them to help this man down to the airport with this mummy case? You'd be willing to do that, wouldn't you? I will do nothing of the kind. Oh, I think you will, Mr. Stanley. You shall inform our radio audience on the next broadcast that your sister, Harriet Stanley, it's none other than the famous Harriet Sedley, who murdered her mother and father 25 years ago with an axe in Gloucester, Massachusetts. <laughs> oh, Mr. Stanley, it's a very small favor. Or would you rather have the good folk of Massalia repeating at your doorstep that once popular little people, Harriet Sedley took an axe and gave her mother 40 wax. <laughs> when the job was good and done, she gave her father 41. <laughs> Remember, Mr. Stanley, if I too would be then giving up something, it would make a hell of a broadcast. Mr. Whiteside, you're the damnedest person I've ever met. It's a little too late in figuring that out. Officers, will you come in here, please? Whiteside, you're a great man. Officers, Mr. Stanley would like you to help this man down to the airport with this mummy case. He's sending it to a friend in Nova Scotia. Collect? Isn't that right, Mr. Stanley? Uh, yes, yes. Thank you, gentlemen. Handle it carefully. Thank you, You are wonderful, and I may one day write a book about you. Don't bother. I can't read. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Maggie. Love conquers all. Careful with that case, boys. It contains an antique. <laughs>